Good evening. Welcome to Israeli News Live. I'm Aaron Murray and I'm filling in for Brother Stephen. Tonight he has some urgent business that he is taking care of and he wanted me to relay to you that Sister Amy did indeed call in and he did record an interview with her and the information that he got today from this interview uh, revealed that there's a, a, a lot of news not being reported um, in the mainstream media that is happening in Israel right now. Later today, uh, Brother Steve said probably in the wee hours of the night this uh, interview will, will more than likely be uploaded for you all to hear and see for yourself. But right now let's take a quick look at the news. This is our website if you haven't visited it recently and how it looks. IsraelReturns.com. Make sure to take a few moments to visit. We're also working on a separate website for news. And here's a sneak peek of what our news website will probably look like. Of course there will be slight changes here and there. As a result of the cessation of flights to and from Tel Aviv, some 10,000 Israelis are stuck in Turkey. Most use Turkey as a step over to save considerable sums on their tickets, but now find themselves stranded. Transportation Ministry initiates an operation to ret retrieve the Israelis stranded in Turkey. The Transportation Mission Ministry initiated on Thursday night an operation to receive Israelis stranded in Turkey due to the airline bans on travel to Ben Gurion Airport. In, in cooperation with the ministry, this was set. They sent planes to Athens. Well, a Turkish carrier was due to bring Israelis to the Greek capital. Well, they would transfer to the Israeli aircraft and return to the airport in Tel Aviv. And as Israel is gathering its people around the world that are stranded, a barrage of rockets target major southern cities. The rockets are still flying in. The barrage of rockets continue to target southern Israeli cities as sirens start in Beersheba and resume in Ashkelon. Earlier, two rockets were intercepted over the coastal city. World Net Daily is reporting that retire, retired Israeli Brigadier General Elihu bin On, don't quote me on that, says Israeli Defense Forces have reduced the Hamas rocket arsenal by about 50 percent. And he says the military operation will continue until Hamas has no rockets remaining and its tunnel system eradicated. Netanyahu states Israel is continuing the Gaza operation with full force. Speaking ahead of a special cabinet meeting, Prime Minister says the IDF has made substantial gains against Hamas terror infrastructure in Gaza. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said Thursday that Israel will continue Operation Protective Edge in Gaza with full force, giving no indication that ceasefire was in the offering. And here's the big controversy right now. Israel opens investigation into claims the IDF shelled a UN school. Israeli officials say the school was located in one of the terrorist central rocket firing zones. The rockets reportedly misfired and fell in the area. Eric Shiva says that Israel calls out the UNRWA for claiming the IDF shelled the school. Israel on Thursday called out the United Nations Aid Agency for falsely claiming that the Israeli Defense Forces did not permit civilians to evacuate a Gaza school where 15 people were killed in an Israeli airstrike, reports the Washington Free Beacon. The UN Relief and Works Agency laid blame for the civilian deaths on the IDF, claiming it never received approval from the IDF for an evacuation from the facility. The UNRWA released a statement claiming they had been attempting to negotiate with the IDF a pause in the firing during which they would guarantee safe corridor to re relocate staff 
and any displaced persons who choose to evacuate to a more secure la location. A approval for that never came to the UNRWA. Earlier, the spokesman Chris had similarly accused the IDF of preventing a civilian evacuation. And so there's an argument here about who did what and where. Multiple IDF sources rejected Multiple IDF sources rejected the claims and characterized them as outright falsehoods when reached by the Washington Free Beacon. For two days, we were trying to move people out of that school in particular and the Bet Haran area in general, said the I an IDF official who was involved in the interactions between the IDF, UNRWA, and International Red Cross leading up the to the incident. The officer continued, This morning we sought a ceasefire in the area and humanitarian evacuation of civilians, but Hamas refused because they wanted to keep civilians in the area to protect their fighters who were firing on the IDF. And here's the latest from the live blog at the Yeshiva World News, the 18th. And the very latest is the Palestinian Authority officials are calling for a day of rage across the West Bank later today. And here's the result of the falsified claims of the IDF hitting the hospital of the IDF hitting the UN school. Riots, riots, riots. And here's some video I'll show you. They're saying here over 10,000 Palestinian protesters have marched on an Israeli checkpoint, sparking clashes with the military. Let's play this and just see what's going on here. <laughs> There are reports that a Palestinian has been killed in clashes on the West Bank. Some 10,000 people are said to be involved in confrontations with soldiers and border police. They're said to be at Kalandia between Jerusalem and Ramallah. There seems to have been a peaceful protest from Ramallah towards Jerusalem, but got held up at this checkpoint. Uh, reports, too, that uh, the clash was reported shortly after the Palestinian leadership meeting in Ramallah called for widespread popular protest in solidarity with Gaza and the resistance. This should be a reminder for us all to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And so we have protests, thousands and thousands of people protesting. And it's been sparked off by another controversial event, uh, shelling of a UN school. And as I stated earlier, this is the second time an inflammatory event has happened that has flared up riots and problems across Israel, Israel and around the world. Anti-Semitism is on the rise. It's time to remember. Pray for the peace of Israel. Pray for the peace of Israel.